Yoshinobu Yamamoto is a 25-year-old right-handed Japanese ace that's about to take Major League Baseball by storm. In fact, it's a very real possibility that he might be the best pitcher in baseball next year. Don't believe me? By the end of this video, you just might. As of November 5th, 2023, his transfer has been approved by his current team, the Oryx Buffaloes. What this means is he is now allowed to move to the player posting system. So what does that mean? Under this system, when an MPB player is posted, his MPB team notifies the MLB commissioner. They give the posting fee based on a type of contract that the player signs and its value. That fee is a flat 25% of the value of a minor league contract. For MLB contracts, that fee is based on the value of the contract that the posted player eventually signs. The player is then given 30 days to negotiate with any MLB team willing to pay the NPB team's posting fee. If the player agrees on a contract term with the team before the 30-day period has expired, the NPB team receives the posting fee from the signing MLB team as a transfer fee, and the player is free to play in the MLB. If no MLB team comes to a contract agreement with the posted player, then no fee is paid and the player's rights revert back to his NPB team. The current process replaced one in which MLB held a silent auction during which MLB teams submitted sealed, uncapped bids in an attempt to win the exclusive negotiating rights with the player posted for a period of 30 days. Once the highest bidding MLB team was determined, the player could then negotiate with that team. Now that we have that cleared up, let's get back to just how good Yamamoto is and some predictions on where he's going to end up. In his seven seasons with Japanese professional baseball, Yamamoto absolutely dominated since coming up as an 18-year-old. He pitched 897 innings while posting a career 70-29 and win-loss record and a 1.82 ERA. The numbers get even better. In those seven seasons, his hits per nine innings was just 6.4, home runs per nine was 0.4, walks per nine was just 2.1, and an insane 9.3 strikeouts per nine innings. He also won gold medals for Japan in the 2020 Olympics and in the 2023 World Baseball Classic while winning the Japanese version for the World Series in 2022. He's also thrown two no-hitters. By the way, again, he's only 25. With his final season in Japan, he went 16-6 with a 1.21 ERA and 164 innings pitched. He struck out 169 and walked 28 while giving up two, yes, two home runs. If you still need some more convincing on just how good he is, he just set a new record in the Japan series, which is the Japanese equivalent to the World Series. Here is the line from Game 6 of that series. In 138 pitches, yeah, you heard me right, in 138 pitches in 2023, he threw nine innings while giving up one run, no walks, and striking out 14. That's a new Japan series record for strikeouts, all of this to force a game seven. Let's get into even more stats if you weren't impressed enough. He has won three straight pitching triple crowns. He won it in 2021, 2022, and 2023. This has unsurprisingly netted him three straight Sawamura awards, which is the Japanese equivalent to the Cy Young. Here are some of the previous winners of the Sawamura Award. They include Masahiro Tanaka, Kenta Maeda, Daisuke Matsuzaka, and Hideo Nomo. None of them, by the way, have won it more than twice. In fact, only one pitcher in Japanese history has won it three times, and that was back in 1958. The interesting thing about this award is the criteria for the selection process. A pitcher must have the following at the end of the season to be considered. They need 25 or more games started, 15 or more wins, 10 complete games or more, 600 winning percentage or higher, 200 or more innings pitched, an earned run average of 2.50 or lower, and 150 strikeouts or more. In fact, no pitcher was found to be deserving of the award in 1971, 1980, 1984, 2000, and 2019. This goes to show that anyone who wins the Sawamura has achieved an incredibly high standard. Now let's talk about his arsenal. What pitching weapons is he bringing to the majors? Standing at 5 foot 10 inches and weighing 177 pounds, the right-hander has a three-quarters delivery which has proven to be incredibly deceptive. With pinpoint command considering how low his walks per nine are, now let's get into his pitches. What is he throwing? He sports both a four-seam and two-seam fastball, a cutter, a curveball, a splitter sinker, and a sweeper. His four-seam fastball sits at an average of 95 miles per hour while topping out at 99 miles per hour. His splitter has been confirmed by scouts to be a legitimate out pitch for him. It shows amazing fading action with batters having extreme difficulty getting that pitch up in the air. 
This one sits on an average of 90 miles per hour. He also changes the shape of it every now and then, causing it to resemble a sinker. The sinker splitter on average sits at 92 miles per hour. Let's talk off speed. Yamamoto's signature pitch is a 12-6 curveball that comes in faster than most, averaging at 77 miles per hour. He's also been known to get his curveball in the low 80s as well. It's been described as a right-handed version of Clayton Kershaw's curveball. This is widely being considered his main out pitch. Lastly, he has the sweeper. Now he only throws a few of those per game, but it clocks in at about 85 miles per hour on average, and he could throw it a lot more in the future in the major leagues. Now that we know what the resume looks like, let's talk about predictions on where he's gonna end up. This year's free agent class is paper thin in the starting pitching department. Teams with money who need pitching will spend it. Besides Shohei Otani, who will not be pitching in 2024 due to Tommy John surgery, Yamamoto is the number one starting pitching target. This year's free agent class includes Aaron Nola, Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, Sonny Gray, and Clayton Kershaw. With how good of a pitching repertoire he has, many compare his tools to that of Hugh Darvish. But before we get into teams, let's talk money. The largest foreign contract ever given was to Masahiro Tanaka in 2014 with the Yankees for seven years and $155 million. Yamamoto is expected to significantly surpass this. In fact, MLB executives believe that it would take a minimum of seven years and $200 million to get him. Now, who is Yamamoto's agent? Well, he's represented by Wasserman, the same group that represents Mets pitcher and Rookie of the Year finalist Kodai Senga, who signed with the Mets for five years and $75 million. Yamamoto has said that he wants to pitch in a big market and his primary focus is to find a team that will help him acclimate to the MLB as quickly and seamlessly as possible. That means we're looking for three things in our predictions. Number one, it has to be a big market team. Number two, they need to have experience signing Japanese pitchers or have Japanese players already. And number three, they need to have the money, obviously, to pay for him. There are just about seven teams that can be in play. The favorites to land his services, firstly, are the New York Mets. The Mets are in dire need of starting pitching, being that they traded their two co-aces this season and lost to Grom last year to free agency. Kodai Senga at this time is absolutely their ace, but he needs help. Senga has made it clear that he has been trying to recruit Yamamoto. The Mets have the money, they're in a big market, and they have last year's top Japanese pitcher helping out. This should give them a huge edge if Yamamoto also considers how easily and successfully Senga transitioned into the MLB with the Mets. Staying in big markets with money, the Yankees would absolutely be the next landing spot. They missed the playoffs, which means the Yanks could be on their villain arc. Their current rotation is Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon, Nestor Cortez, Michael King, and Clark Schmidt. Rodon had his worst season when healthy and missed a significant portion with injury. Cole is slated to win the Cy Young, but the rest of the rotation is similar to the Mets, filled with question marks. If the Yankees are going to spend money, it won't be on Otani, who can only DH this upcoming year. That's where Giancarlo Stanton lives. So if the money is going to go anywhere, it's going to go to Yamamoto, who addresses their significant pitching needs. Next, the Dodgers are a big market team with big money. Their rotation has question marks with Clayton Kershaw posting a big year but also being a free agent, and Julio Urias hitting free agency as well. Walker Buehler is still there, but he's coming off Tommy John surgery. Dustin May and Tony Gonsolin also went down this past season with Tommy John as well. The Cubs could also be considered a big market team in Chicago and they signed Seiya Suzuki a few years ago. The Cubs rotation is thin with Kyle Hendricks and Marcus Stroman out. They also signed Craig Council's manager. They're in win now mode. Next, I have some outlier teams to watch out for. We have the Giants. They aren't a large market team, but their head of baseball operations has said he loves what he sees of Yamamoto and they will be very aggressive with courting his services. The Phillies are always in the mix with spending big money and upgrading the team. With a World Series appearance in 2022 and an NLCS berth in 2023, they'll be looking to get whomever they can to push them over the top. I also have the Rangers who could continue their spending spree to bolster their rotation with DeGrom going down. The last team I have is kind of a dark horse, the Red Sox. They've always been huge in the international market with signings like Masataka Yoshida, Daisuke Matsuzaka, Hideo Nomo, Koji Uhara, Jinchi Tazawa, Takahashi Saito, Hideki Okajima, and more. They'll always be a force in the Japanese market. They have the money, big market feel, and Japanese history Yamamoto may be looking for. So, there you have it. Is Yamamoto a future major league legend in the making? Where do you think he's gonna end up signing? Sound off in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It really helps a ton. I'll catch you all in the next video. Later.